we shall try to study the photovoltaic cell from the electrical engineer's point of view. From the electrical engineer's point of view, most of the devices like the diodes, PJTs, MOSFETs, IGBTs are black boxes, they are bought out items and uh, the design is performed based on the data sheet parameters. Likewise, we would like to study the photovoltaic cell too from the terminal characteristics. Without going into the physics of the PN junction of the photovoltaic cell, we would like to study the terminal characteristics and develop a model, an electric circuit equivalent model for the photovoltaic cell. This model we would later on like to use it for analysis and design of photovoltaic based systems. Here is an example of a polycrystalline photovoltaic cell. This is the top layer which is the N type, N type part of the PN junction. The bottom layer is the P type and the P type substrate metallization. So normally what you would see is that the N type metallizations are uh, joined together and then that would be connected to the minus terminal and the P type metallization would be connected to the uh, plus terminal. Another example of uh, a PV cell which is not at encaps encapsulated is this. This is again another polycrystalline PV cell. Something that is encapsulated with glass and that you can use for lab purposes is something like this. You see here the plus terminal and the minus ter terminal. This is a monocrystalline cell. The top N substrate is, conne is uh, connected through the metallization to the minus terminal. And the bottom substrate is connected to the plus terminal. So this is nothing but like a diode, a PN junction. This is the anode and this is the cathode. So this is brought out as terminals on the back side and then students can perform experiments on this very simple encapsulated PV cell. The operation is pretty simple. Light falls on this glass surface, the top surface of the PN junction, which is the end type and the valence electrons get excited and get move into the conduction band and through this top metallization moves into the negative terminal and then flows out into the external circuit and into the anode terminal and comes back to the P substrate through the bottom metallization. So it is important that uh, the exposed part uh, covered by glass here uh, has to be perpendicular to the incident radiation coming from the sun. Only then this particular PN junction will act as a generator. To understand the photovoltaic cell, let us start with another PN junction, the well-known diode. Let us connect this diode in a circuit a typical uh, circuit for this would be something like this uh, where the diode is part of a much more complex uh, external circuit as shown here. Let us put in some terminals. So this portion of the circuit, the diode with along with these terminals uh, is of interest and let us study its characteristic before we try to understand the photovoltaic cell's characteristic. Let us call this terminal as A for anode and let us call this terminal as K for cathode. And we know that the current always flows from the anode to the cathode in the case of the diode. 
we call this as the current i. Another parameter, terminal parameter of interest is the voltage across the uh, terminals A and K and we call that VAK. So it is of uh, interest to study the diode PN junction in terms of the current through the diode and the voltage across its anode cathode terminal VAK. So with this polarity of uh, voltage VAK being taken as positive, that is the non-arrow end as the common point for probing and the arrow end as the positive terminal for probing for the voltage. And the direction of the current as shown here as positive, then we say that the power flows into the device. The device is acting as a sink and the power flow is into these one port terminals. The object of interest now is the diode part. So we'll bring the focus to the diode. And this diode in its uh, present representation as it is drawn in the circuit with the current flowing into the terminals, the anode terminal and with the voltage indicated as thus and the power flowing into the diode terminals, the diode acts as a sink, which means it receives power and only dissipates. It cannot generate. So this a uh, particular portion of the diode, uh, portion of the diode circuit is now a sink circuit and not a generator circuit. We will gradually see how we uh, make it into a generator circuit and what extra components we need to add in order to bring about the model of the photovoltaic cell. Let us now make some space for drawing the characteristic. We will reduce this portion and keep it there. Let us have the x-axis and we shall mark it as VAK. This is the voltage axis and then we have the y-axis. We shall mark it as I and draw the IV curve. The IV curve of this particular diode is very familiar to all of us. We will stick to drawing mainly the forward portion of the characteristics, which of course is like this. So this is the familiar uh, static curve of the diode and uh, um, uh, we know how this has come, come about. Now from this, how do we develop the photovoltaic cell model? We see that the first quadrant is uh, involved in dissipation and this is the dissipation mode or, or uh, uh, of components uh, basically sinks wherein the current flow is into the terminals as shown. The fourth quadrant is a generation quadrant. Here the voltage is still in the same direction and only the current has become negative or current has reverse direction here in which, in, uh, in which case the power flow also reverses direction which means the power is flowing out of the terminals and therefore acting as a generator. So this portion of um, uh, the IV characteristic is of interest to us because we would like to see how this diode can become a PV cell and also a generator. Let me drag this here, a copy of it here and increase the size so as to make it more legible. So in this quadrant, we see that the current is negative with respect to what we have represented here. If this was supposed to be the positive direction of the current flowing into the terminal, negative would be direction of the current flowing out of the terminal. And the object here, the diode in this case, plus something else, will act as a source and the power is actually now flowing 
out of the terminal because the product of these two will result in a negative value which means negative power. So in this quadrant, fourth quadrant, this component or object is behaving as a source. But how does the current here flow in this direction? Because we all know that the diode can handle current flow only in the direction from anode to cathode. How can one make the current flow in this direction out of the terminal? Across the diode, we add a current source, IP. In such a direction, the current is flowing in this fashion as shown. Only under this condition, you will see that this current splits at this node into the diode ID as shown here and into the terminal I as, as indicated here. Therefore, you see that through the diode, the current is still flowing from the anode to the cathode, but at the terminal, the current is flowing out of the terminal. So if you look at this whole uh, block as a whole, the current flows out of the terminal, voltage is still retaining the same polarity, the power is flowing out of the terminal, and therefore this whole block acts as a source. This is actually the principle of the photovoltaic cell. This current source IP is actually the photo current, which is dependent upon the solar radiation intensity. More the solar radiation intensity, higher is the value of the IP, larger will be this current and uh, larger will be the uh, current flowing out of the terminal and therefore the power. There are a few other components and non-ideality is also that will come into the model, but uh, this uh, basically will indicate how the photovoltaic cell is behaving as uh, an electrical source from an electrical engineer's point of view. Let us study it just a little bit further before we develop the equations for this. IP is the photo current which is directly proportional to the solar intensity, the solar power that is incident on the surface of the panel. If IP is zero, that is under dark condition, the characteristic is like this with uh, the um, uh, bias at the x-axis line. As the light intensity increases, the photocurrent IP increases and this whole characteristic starts coming down by an amount equivalent to the photocurrent. So uh, increasing IP would mean the shifting of the characteristic like this higher the uh, incident power, incident solar power, the more the characteristic will shift towards the uh, fourth quadrant. So any operating point on this part of the curve would mean that the photovoltaic cell is operating in the generating mode. So normally the photovoltaic cell is considered to be a generator and one would like to see that uh, it is in the first quadrant. Therefore, we now redefine the current, the voltage remaining the same, but the current, the direction of the current, we will take it as positive for this axis when the current goes out of the terminal as shown here and not like what it was defined before for the case of the simple diode. So we would not like to have this but would like to 
use this as our reference now and this we would like to bring it to the first quadrant which would mean we have to flip the current axis and that is uh, done by uh, just simple flipping of the y axis because the current has just flipped the direction. So this here forms the characteristic, the IV characteristic of a photo cell, a photovoltaic cell. Consider the IV characteristic of a typical photovoltaic cell. Observe that for some portion of the IV characteristic, the photovoltaic cell behaves as a constant current, more or less constant current. For this portion of the characteristic, the photovoltaic cell would behave like more or less a constant voltage source. So the photovoltaic cell has this unique feature of being both a combination of a constant voltage source and a constant current source. Let us draw a line. This is the constant current line. Let us draw another line. This is the constant voltage line. The constant current line, if you take, it gives an idea of the slope of the constant current portion and therefore it uh, implies existence of a shunt resistance, a high value of shunt resistance across a constant current source. So we can include a non-ideality or shunt, a high value of shunt resistance across the constant current source as shown here. Likewise, the uh, voltage, the voltage line, the slope of it uh, to the voltage portion of the characteristic would imply a series impedance in series with the terminals. So it would appear as though we have a series impedance at the terminals uh, like this. So let us include this non-ideality also to the existing model. Minor redrawing and relocation of the components this forms the equivalent circuit model of a photovoltaic cell. This has a symbol which looks like this. This envelope-like symbol is the symbol of a photovoltaic cell. It represents either a photovoltaic cell or a photovoltaic module. There are two terminals, the anode terminal and the cathode terminal. This is the terminal voltage and the terminal current generally flowing out of the anode terminal. So here uh, we have uh, the entire photovoltaic cell uh, with the characteristic, the equivalent circuit model and the symbol.